Maybe a little bit of good news here on our Saturday morning, it's right around 9 a.m. And, you know, we still have potential tropical cyclone nine, not named Melda yet, but at least based on all the guidance we're seeing here on our Saturday morning, there is a trend that this could stall out just towards the south of the Carolinas, maybe pull out to sea. But that is still very uncertain. And so is some of the impacts that we're going to be seeing here along coastal areas of Florida. So first off, you look at the satellite picture. Of course, we have our two storms, so nine still being called nine is not named Imelda as of recording this. And of course, Humberto, which is now up to a major hurricane status, powerful storm system. And we'll talk about that in a second. Also, it's important to kind of look at both of these systems um, together versus separately because they are going to be interacting with each other. Now, first, potential tropical cyclone nine moving off here towards northwest at about seven miles per hour. Wind speed is about 35 miles per hour, but it is expected to slowly gather some strength. In fact, tropical storm warnings are up across parts of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos here. Now, it is continuing to expect to be intensified, working its way towards the north, skirting the east coast of Florida. And really looks like the bulk of the weather should stay offshore <coughs> of the east coast here. With that said, you're still going to be looking at rough rip currents, high surf, maybe passing rain bands along the coast before this stalls out, but gets into an area that could allow it to intensify up to a hurricane status just basically east of Jacksville and southeast of Savannah. But you see how it stalls out here and the cone of air opens up quite significantly. Uh, that's because there's confidence in the next 12 hours, 24 hours about where this is going to go towards the north. But by the time we get up to about Monday, the confidence goes down drastically. And this is because of the interaction with, of course, Humberto towards the east, a high pressure ridge towards the north. And you can see here on our spaghetti plots, the interaction and kind of them fighting with each other really is going to determine if this makes a hard right turn or even some of the models still kind of take it slowly on shore in the South Carolina. But a good number of them are shifting it towards the east today. This is our in-house high resolution model. Kind of gives you a good idea of what we're looking at here all the way up through about Monday. And like I said, Monday is about where the confidence takes it as far as going basically due north. But it's about this point where it does start to interact with Humberto towards the east. And you do start to see it stall out and kind of linger there. So <clears throat> for anybody along the Carolina coastline, I mean, I would be getting ready for definitely heavy rainfall if this stalls out there. But uh, better news for you today versus, let's say, just 12 hours ago. Tropical storm warnings are in place, though, as I mentioned, across the parts of the Turks and Caicos and over towards the Bahamas from this storm system. And you can even see the wind field is expected to bring tropical storm strength over those islands. And as this intensifies up to a hurricane status, could be looking at some gusty conditions right along parts of the first coast and eastern areas of Jacksonville. And then you see how this stalls out just skirting the South Carolina coastline and this is kind of the overall atmospheric dynamics if you uh, uh will here basically you have this front that brought us some rainfall across jacksonville on friday that stalls out and kind of pulls us towards north but then you see right here you have that high pressure ridge you have our low towards the east here and the one towards the west humberto just towards the east and what sometimes can happen if humberto is strong enough that high pressure ridge helps cause us to stall out and then you could see humberto maybe pull it towards the east as it moves up like that think of like orbital physics like a black hole sucking in a planet um and this is all part of kind of the fujiwara effect if you will too because if these storms the magic number is about eight to nine hundred miles if they get closer than that um they start to kind of orbit or pinwheel around a common center but if one's really stronger than the other, instead of orbiting a common center, it will basically grab it and kind of cannibalize it and pull it towards it. So this is something we've been talking about for days, how that interaction could play a major role. And the interaction itself brings down the confidence level in the forecast once they do start to bump up against each other. What we do know is Humberto, high confidence is going to pull towards the north. It's not going to be the other way around. Uh, what could be named Melda is not going to grab Humberto and pull it towards the west um it's going to be a major hurricane possibly a cat three passing just off the west coast of bermuda and they're probably going to be seeing some massive waves tropical storm strength conditions on bermuda but take here at our, our um ensembles i mean this we call this spaghetti because this looks like somebody baked some spaghetti and just chucked it at the wall here but you can see there's a lot of these right hand churns increasing today within the ensembles and that does take us to kind of lead up to that 
a decrease in the confidence with this. So one big thing right now is, though, is that um, the National Weather Service continuing to put out more weather balloons, help get us a good grasp of the atmospheric dynamics. They've actually doubled up at all those locations, kind of show you the flow of this um, overall flow and how this is going to interact with our area just offshore here. So yeah, we're going to continue to keep you posted. Firstcoastnews.com slash Hurricane Central is where uh, we have a lot of these graphics if you want to look at them some, them yourself. And plus, we're going to be live streaming during all our synoptic hours, giving you the latest updates on what we could be seeing out here and what the latest information is coming from the National Hurricane Center. But for now, I wouldn't let your guard down in South Carolina. The first coast, including Jacksonville, I'm not worried about direct impacts, but indirect along the coast is probable here as we go ahead over um, probably Tuesday, Monday night and into Tuesday. As always, thanks for stopping by, and uh, yeah, stay safe out there, friends.